Today I'm going to be making the mold for the speaker enclosures and actually making some parts. Welcome to another episode. Hi, my name is John. Today I'm going to be building a mold for the speaker enclosures. I have a link below to the previous episode where I designed the mold. The mold, as you'll see, works. I can create parts but it's very hard to get the parts out of the mold. I'm going to redesign the mold and improve it. But before we get to that, uh, let's have, head over and I'll show you making the mold uh, on the machine. I'm just going to do uh, a quick sequence of all of the steps. Well, actually not all of the steps, just some of the steps. And then we'll head to the shop, hook up the mold to the injection molding machine and make some parts. So if you don't want to see all of the machine video you can skip forward and uh, have a look at uh, just the injection molding. Now I rushed this video a little bit because I'm leaving tomorrow to head to TCS in uh, outside of Philadelphia and I wanted to take some of these samples with me. Uh, one of the things that you're going to see is some of the video didn't turn out as well as I'd like. Um, we're in a house right now where I've got a small space uh, that is on a wood floor and it vibrates a lot when I have my compressor and the fan running to extract the fumes. I have a workshop that's been built uh, which will have a concrete floor so once I've moved into that probably in a few months I should have better videos. Anyway let's head to the shop and uh, start making the mold. Once I'm uh, all done with the mold, there's a little bit of a burr around here. So the way I can knock that off really quickly is just a little bit of sanding on a piece of sandpaper like so. And uh, without much effort, let me get rid of this, the burr is gone. So that's a trick that I learned uh, from Jimmy Booth at uh, PBL. It's a really quick way to get rid of the burrs. This pin is a little longer than I need it to be, so I'm going to uh, put a mark around it and then cut it so that it's close to the length. 
As you can see, the mark is just above where I want it to be. At this point, this is sticking up a little bit, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to measure the height uh, from these pins down to here, as well as the height from the pins down to there. So here's my depth micrometer. Okay, so I've got the height to the top of the pins, which is uh, 0 0.011 plus uh, 0 0.025. And then I'll measure this one. And that is, happens to be basically flush. Try that again. No, it's about six thousandths down. So I'll just uh, subtract the difference between those two and then uh, touch off in the middle and then go down just the, the right amount. Uh, a couple of minutes later and you can see it's it's flush and uh, I think there's a it's actually proud by about two thousandths of an inch and that's because for a ejector pin it's better to have it slightly proud rather than recessed so that this bites into the plastic a little bit. Next step take it to the molding injection molding machine and uh, let's give it a try. This is my AB100 made by AB Machines and it has uh, been upgraded with this clamp. Uh, the AB100 has a, a manual clamp kind of uh, like this here. This is what's known as a pneumatic hydraulic cylinder. So this part is pneumatic and it has a uh, smaller cylinder that it pushes on that's hydraulic. Yeah, if I remember correctly, this gives me about a 40 to 1 multiplier uh, between the pneumatic force and the final force. So I get about four and a, four and a half tons of clamping force. Uh, the way I set this up is first I put the mold in and I line it up with the, uh, the nozzle here. And then I want this to be reasonably close. So I just screw this in until it's about the right distance because this doesn't have much travel. This has, I think, uh, an eighth of an inch of travel or something like that. So I want to get it so that it can clamp fairly well and it's easy to take out. And then to clamp it, I just go like this and now it's clamped with the, the full force. Um, back here is my air supply, the pressure. I usually start out fairly low and then I increase the uh, pressure. This is the clamping pressure. And given that this is a large part, I think I'll actually set it up to about um, 110 pounds of clamping force to begin with. This right here is the injection pressure, and it's currently set to about 50 uh, psi. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to turn this on. Uh, there's a control panel over here. Uh, get it warmed up. And this is a hose to pull the fumes from the plastic to the outside using a dust collector fan. So it's going to get pretty noisy in here once I get this actually running. And um, I probably will do a voiceover for the... I click the button to start this cycle and you can see the cylinder drop and then go back up. And then I can pull the mold out. But I can't pull it apart without a screwdriver to part the two halves apart. They stick pretty well together. I'm using a punch against the back of the ejector pin to try to push the part out. Okay, well, I think I'm going to need to do something with the ejector pins because that did not work out very well. This is a close-up of the process, starting with prying the two halves apart. And then I'm going to use a flat uh, blade. I'm not sure what it is, but it's exacto knife. And I kind of uh, pry it underneath the edge and work my way around to loosen the part from the core. It takes a while, and so obviously I'm going to have to change how I do this. At this point you can see that I have it almost all the way off and then it just pops off. Assembling the parts is 
just a matter of aligning the uh, alignment pin, pushing it back together, putting it into the machine, and then pushing it on the lever to engage the clamp. Then add a little bit of extra plastic to the cylinder. Finally push the button on the left to start the cycle again. So as you saw I had some problems uh, pulling the part off the mold and it makes sense uh, thinking about it afterwards because I had a single pin in the center. That single pin is going to pull up here and cause the plastic to pull kind of this way which will cause it to clamp more firmly onto the core. What I'm going to do is uh, in part three, I was hoping this would be part two in the final part, I'm going to change the mold design so that I have three parts. I'll have the cavity as I do today, I'll have the core, and then in between the core and the cavity I'll have another piece which is called the stripper plate, and that piece will push the part off the core. I'll have more details about that in the next video. Anyway, I, I hope you enjoyed this video. Please subscribe. Uh, if you liked it, give me a thumbs up or a thumbs down. If you didn't like it, uh, please let me know what you didn't like so I can improve the videos for the next time. And I'll see you hopefully in about two or three weeks.